what minimalism in itself is it's a way of life it is about the mindset it is not just about the output that you give support our mission of spread knowledge and knowledge should not be hidden behind paywalls we have blessing on our show today blessing who is a logo and brand identity designer his work mostly deals with creating some minimalistic and memorable logos that have achieved him around 45k followers on instagram today on our episode he going to discuss a lot of factors on what is digital minimalism and how one can resist himself that swing that they take from real life to the digital life making a better happy environment to the ones around us to and ourselves so stay tuned a lot of happening stuff we're going to discuss during our conversation of this so happy designing everyone Hi Wilson, welcome to Notes of Design. It's a pleasure to host you on our show. Thank you very much, man. I really appreciate it, and super happy to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. How are you doing today, Wilson? I am doing perfectly fine. I got up a little late, so that's a late start to the day. But I am super happy to be here talking about design and stuff with you. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for again like giving your time and then coming and uh, helping us to spread our movement of spread knowledge and uh, knowledge should not hidden behind paywalls. And the topic today we are speaking is on uh, digital minimalism, right? Yeah, absolutely. I love talking about digital minimalism because uh, by the way, I also have a podcast and I recently did an episode on digital minimalism and this is something that I'm very passionate about and something that I have discovered a while ago and have been sticking to it. So, I am super happy and super stoked as I say to spread value. <laughs> that's great uh, so built in like audience who have no idea about you like most of them know cuz you have more than 45k plus followers on instagram running on a big league but to the, our new audience if you could give a small brief about you yeah i think still i think that even though i have 45.4k something 45.4k followers i still think that there's a long way to go so absolutely i would love to talk uh, about who i am and what i do so for those who don't know i am blessing vogis and i'm from india and i am a logo and brand identity designer and uh, i'm a self taught designer started all from scratch and accidentally jumped on design i wouldn't say accidentally because i was always interested in design but never had the idea that i can make it a career so i jumped into design and uh, started with instagram but now i have uh, my own website and stuff and working for clients all around the world so it's been a great journey so that is quite a brief about obviously who i am because if i start talking about what the journey is like it will take another hour and two but if you would like to know more about it you can reach out to me and i would happy to talk about it thank you so much wilson that was quite a no deep worries. introduction though <laughs> no worries <laughs> So what is minimalism in general? All right. Yeah, minimalism is something uh that's like now become a very trendy topic, a very trendy word that people are nowadays using. Minimalism is something that you will see nowadays in a lot of areas. Uh for those who are not uh, aware of what minimalism is, I would like to just give you a brief it is it is uh nothing more than a way of approaching whatever that you are approaching so minimalism can be in fashion minimalism can be in design minimalism can be in your personality and minimalism is obviously in the design world as well because we say that as simple and as minimal it can be that is the best form of design that is the best form of product that you can put up for your customers or clients so minimalism has different definitions for different areas and different a niche of uh, life or of career or of design so if somebody says that i am a minimalist fashion uh, designer that is something that they approach a very minimalistic style to their design fashion to their fashion if somebody says that i'm a minimalistic designer that means that they have a very minimalistic approach to 
the design itself, the way they design, it's way more minimalism. But what minimalism in itself is, it's a way of life. It is about the mindset. It is not just about the output that you give, but it's a mindset. And the reason why I say, because the topic that we're going to talk about today, digital minimalism, it has a lot to do about the mindset rather than just the product or the output that you're giving. So in short, minimalism, it's a mindset. It's a way of life. It's how you choose to live. That's good. Why digital in specific? Digital minimalism, it's, uh, it's a very, very new way of approaching the digital world that we are in. Because as you and I know that we are living in a world, living in a day and age where we cannot do our day-to-day stuff without having any digital products in use. Because right now, for example, right now, whatever the, the call that we're having, it's not an offline talk. We're having it online. Exactly. We're not even in, in the same place. And this is happening digitally. So it is very much uh, clear that, you know, the things that we have and the world around us, it revolves around this digital product. And as a part of minimalism, digital minimalism has to be a part of the modern day concept. Because if you're talking about minimalism, you cannot opt out digital minimalism. It's our lives revolve around this thing. Our, we are bombarded by digital world. We are within this digital world. So just as minimalism, digital minimalism follows the same principle. Now, minimalism is about living your life intentionally for the things that you have. And what do I mean by that? Choosing things in your life or focusing on things that really matter, that really provide value to you rather than just having it accumulating stuff and consumizing it and consuming content and buying things just for the sake of having it rather than we choose intentionally what matters to us. We choose intentionally what will give value to our life or to our careers and then we live a life accordingly. So when we talk about digital minimalism, it's about choosing the right amount of technology intentionally. So that is what digital minimalism is. Okay, so we as designers, like we are 24 by 7 stuck with our digital devices and stuff. And we are the ones who made mediums for digital things. So Mm -hmm. for people like us, it's really hard to cut down the limit of using digital things. And points on that? Absolutely. That's a very good question because, you know, when I was also learning about this digital minimalism, by the way, when uh, there are a lot of resources that we obviously we'll be sharing at the end of this episode that can help you learn more about digital minimalism. So one of the books uh, that I read uh, in the early stages of learning about this thing uh, was by Carl Newport. It's a book called Digital Minimalism itself. The name of the book is Digital Minimalism. And uh, there he, you know, mentions what it is, the philosophy, the principle and how you can apply it on your life. So when I was reading that book, I was like, I am a designer. I am a freelancer and I work with clients internationally. You cannot expect me to stay away from digital products, to stay away from social media, because if I take away social media from my business, if I take away these digital products from my business, it is going to ruin it because all that my business holds is right now in the digital world, in the internet, because I reach out to people on internet I talk to my clients on internet. I get projects from internet. So if I take this thing out, how, how is my business going to look like? So that was my, my first concern. But to be honest, minimalism, digital minimalism in specific is not about keeping these things away, is not about completely taking these away. But as I mentioned, it is about choosing the right amount of technology, the right amount of mediums, the right amount of digital products to use intentionally that can be valuable for us. So as your question, as designers, how is it possible that we can apply digital minimalism in life? So one of the, one of the ways that we can apply digital minimalism in our design career and design life is that there are a lot of aspects, but I would like to talk about some healthy phone practices because come on, we all designers are so much on our phones and it's, it's always, you know, interacting with the community, interacting with the the 
engagement with the clients and all that stuff. So phones are a very important part of our design career as well. So I would like to talk about a little bit about the healthy phone practices that we can uh, that we can adopt for this digital minimalism. There are obviously other factors like um, how to use your laptop efficiently, how to use your uh, or the other digital products that you might have efficiently. But I would like to specifically talk about phone practices because that is what most of us have. Like I can say that probably 99.9% of the listeners will be having a phone and uh, they are somebody who are very active on the phone. So I would like to talk about that. So first thing uh, I would like to say about is you can have intentional apps on your phone. What do I mean by that? This might sound like a very vague idea, sound like a very weird idea of what, what do you mean by intentional apps? We are meant to have apps on our phone. Why do we need to be intentional about the, having the apps? But trust me, you will know when you experience the result. Start by deleting all the apps you don't use anymore. Because come on, if we analyze, there are somewhere close to like 10 to 15 apps that we don't use on a day-to-day basis, but it's just there. And we think just in case, if I need this, I'm just going to have this on my phone. This is a way of starting the decluttering process of digital minimalism. So what that lets you do is get rid of the apps that are not providing you value. So go through your apps list, go through your applications and phone applications and try to figure out which are the apps that are providing me no value. For example, something like some stupid games. There are some very weird apps that we have on our phone just because we found it cool. There, are, there might be some, something like an AR app. We found it somewhere and people said, oh, this is so cool. You know, you can just uh, swap faces and you can have so crazy stuff around with the AR and VR. We were like, oh, that's so cool. I can just, um, you know, make fun with my friends and all that stuff. But Frankly speaking, we just use it once and then it's just there. It's, it's not providing any value. So start by decluttering, start by deleting such apps. I'm not talking about keeping them away, but I'm talking about deleting these apps. That's going to help your mindset into more into this digital minimalism mindset. So that would be the first step that I would recommend people to do is remove the apps that don't provide you value that you don't use. Now, <laughs> the second thing that I'm going to talk about, it's something very weird is to get rid of the social media apps. Now, what do I mean by that? To get rid of the social media app, because right now we, we just, I just said that our lives as designers revolve around the social media. But why do I say that remove social media from art? Because here comes the big deal. Let me tell you, you will survive even if you don't have social media on your phone. You might think that this is absolutely not true, but try it out for yourself get rid of your social media apps for a week or so. Now, this has not to be confused because there are a lot of designers, there are a lot of people, those who have the complete online presence on social media. For example, when I started out, I started out with Instagram. So Instagram was the one platform that I was active on. Maybe you can have limitations on those apps. Maybe you don't want to remove those apps, perfectly fine. But there are a few of the apps that you have, social media apps that you have just for having fun let's say something like um, Facebook, something like WhatsApp, something like uh, Tinder. These are all things that you have just to have fun. And it's not providing you as much value that you think you are having. Other than that, I say social media isn't, don't take me wrong, it isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's definitely a bad habit. And there are, there's a big difference between this bad thing and bad habit because just figure, figure this thing out and notice this, that you get to Instagram maybe for just replying to a message and you end up scrolling over and over again, endlessly doing nothing but just scrolling, checking out people's posts. You have wasted your time right there by just simply scrolling and thinking that you're consuming content, but actually you're wasting time, to be honest. That's what's happening. So I would say try it out for yourself. There are a lot of ways that you can try it out. There's no specific rule that you have to remove all the social media apps, but something that suits you. All that I'm trying to say is limit the use of social media on your phone itself. You can always uh, get to your laptop and check Facebook. You can always get to your laptop and check Twitter. You can always get to your laptop and check Instagram. So 
try to reduce the time in the phone itself. The next thing, a very important factor that I would say, even if you have a social media app on your phone, just block the notifications. Don't have the notifications on because these notifications, these badges that we see, the notifications that you're on a lock screen, it is so much tempting. And doesn't matter how self-controlled you are, you cannot stop yourself from looking at that lock screen notification, clicking on it, getting on Instagram and thinking that it will make value or it will make a difference, but absolutely not. So removing notifications, blocking these notifications, the social media notifications are going to make a lot of difference. For Leave the phone calls and text messages absolutely because you don't want to miss your dear and near ones, uh, you know, calls or messages. But these social media, I'm talking about Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, all this stuff, getting rid of notifications is a super a highly recommended thing. Also, the last thing I would say is use do not disturb as much as possible. Do not disturb or there are a lot of other terms for do not disturb and nowadays in phones, but do not disturb is a very underrated uh, feature, I would say, used by people because it just helps you to live in that solitude moment where you are just with yourself and not really putting so much focus on your phone. So these are a few of the tips that I would say that are healthy phone practices, absolutely beginner stages and keep a track on how much are you on your phone because nowadays all the phones have this screen time or well-being features, digital being features, something like that, that helps you track your phone usage. How much time are you spending on social media? Track your usage and try to get it down and try to have limitations on that. So these are all the beginner stages, uh, practices that can help you to learn more about digital minimalism. I hope that was not super long and that was uh, helpful for the listeners. No, no, no. It was totally cool that you really helped us build a picture that the swing that we take right from our digital interaction to the real life again and again digital so that swing has to be in a controlled moment so that's very well so sorry yeah. for cutting me down so like the core principles if you say what will be those core principles of digital minimalism i would say that the core principles of digital minimalism because i keep saying this over and over again that we were not made to be slaves of these digital products which is sadly the case right now knowingly or unknowingly we are becoming slaves to to these products you know, we are humans and as humans in this world, we have the authority to have authority over other things. But surprisingly, nowadays, these digital products, these, uh, you know, virtual reality products, these things that really don't have any basis of life, they are having control over us, which is super crazy because you are a living being. And think about that, that these non-living beings are having control over you. How how horrible the, the situation is going. I'm not saying I'm not against digital products. I am myself a gadget geek and I love having gadgets around me. I love collecting gadgets and I am a super gadget fan. So that doesn't, I don't ignore the fact that these things have control over us. So the core principle I would say for digital minimalism is to define your technology intentional use. How are you going to define your technology use? How are you going to interact with these digital products? Make a rule for yourself. There is no global rule in minimalism. There is no global rule that can help you understand what digital minimalism is or how you can take this forward. But you have to define your own personal rules for this technology usage because things don't seem the same way for everybody in the world. Something that seems okay for me, that might not be okay for you. You might have a different uh, scenario or a different environment. So make these rules by yourself. You have to figure these things out to be intentional about the usage. It's all about living intentionally. Minimalism is all about living intentionally. You know, to notice the things that you're doing, are they providing value? Or just you are doing just for the sake of doing it, maybe because everybody else is doing it, maybe because you think it's cool to do it, maybe because it is trendy, so you're doing it. But rather than all of this, be intentional about your usage, whether it be digital products, whether it be life decisions, whether it be getting on social media, whether it be whatever that is, it's all about being intentional. It's about the mindset 
more over anything because minimalism when we people hear minimalism they think all right so minimalism is something that i need to get rid of all of the stuff around me live with a bed live with a chair and live my life like a stone age guy that is absolutely not what minimalism is it's about the mindset having all of these things you can still be a minimalist it's all about the mindset the way you use things around you the way you see things around you that is what minimalism is and that is what digital minimalism that is the core principle of digital minimalism thank you so much for giving so much value on digital minimalism oh, absolutely i i love talking about it as you can see, as you can see i love talking about it and i can keep on talking more and more about this doesn't matter how much time you give me so yeah it's it's absolutely a pleasure to share whatever i know about this thing thank, so, yeah. thank you so much in this way you are helping a lot of digital zombies get back to their real world so applaud on that <laughs> <laughs> absolutely yeah <laughs> So like someone, a new person is like trying out these ways. So any, like apart from mobile, like, is there any other suggestions that you want to suggest them? Um, I would say to learn more about this concept. This is a very interesting concept, but it's a very scary concept <laughs> because you might think, oh, if I become a minimalist, I will have to get rid of a lot of things. But honestly speaking, that is what matters because we have so much of noise around us so much of noise around us that we don't focus on things that should matter there are a lot of resources available on internet to know more about minimalism uh i would say the the first guys that i was super addicted to right now i am as well these are the, the guys called the minimalists uh joshua joshua and ryan nicodemus joshua Melbourne's and Ryan Nicodemus, if I'm not wrong with the names, but these are the guys called the minimalists. They are a group of people. They are actually two guys, but now they have a full-fledged community around them. These are the people that are promoting minimalism as a way of life. Uh, they worked as as uh, IT guys and into a lot of business stuff, nine to five jobs. They had high paying nine to five jobs, but they left all of that. And right now they are in a journey to spread minimalism and to spread this whole concept of minimalism. So check this guys out. It's called The Minimalists. It's a group. You can Google The Minimalists and they have their own website. They have their own podcast. They have their own YouTube channel. So you can learn more about that. I would also like to share a resource that is uh, the book called Digital Minimalism, which I mentioned earlier in this episode, that is uh, by Cal Newport. You can have it down in the show notes as well so that people can easily find it out. So these are the two resources that I would say for a beginner to understand about minimalism so that they can, you know, figure this out, whether it's good for them or whether they are really a minimalist themselves and they didn't figure that out, you know, because sometimes we are minimalists and we do follow these principles, but we don't know because yeah. we have never heard about it. So these resources will help you to learn more about that. A lot of things are in deep, which we cannot discuss in a short span of time. So checking these resources out will really help you. There's also a thing called Marie Kondo method. Now Marie Kondo is, uh, she's a lady who, also promotes minimalism. She has his own way of defining minimalism. So that's what I'm saying that minimalism has no global rule. You can put out a structure for yourself and learn what that is. But to get the basics out, I would suggest these resources so that you can learn more about it and apply it in on your own way. Thank you so much, Wilson. So keeping our sh show short, like our theme is like go short, but give a lot of valuable content. I would like to end mm -hmm. this by asking your few favorite reads. Okay, few favorite reads. I would say absolutely Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport and Essentialism by The Minimalists. And there's a book called um, How to Live Better. I don't remember the name of the author, but uh, you can Google it out, How to Live Better. And there's a book called How to Live with Less. So these are my favorite reads uh, that are helped me to, uh, to know more about in this particular topic. Thank you once again, Wilson, for coming on the show and giving us a lot of value on uh, digital minimalism. Absolutely. Uh, pleasure. This inspires, pleasure a lot of, this inspires a lot of people to cut down. Even it inspires me to now reduce the time and uh, things that I spend over my phone and declutter the old applications that I have. I uh, would love to see yeah, you. That's the goal, man. That's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> We'd love to see you again on our show. Thank yeah. you. Absolutely. I would love to talk more about this and love to talk more about stuff that we have. Uh, thank you very much for having me.
really appreciate the fact that you took the time out to invite and uh, super happy to be sharing the value that we can. Thank you.